Coming up on Living Ramadan tonight, we speak to therapeutic life coach Nuha Esol. Actor Royston Stoffels provides anonymously his perspective on Ramadan. Babu Fablonka, inspirational speaker, provides a motivational message. A dynamic duo, Widar Habir and Imam Yasmina Ratcliffe from the Independent Women Empowerment Fund, tell us about their Ramadan activities. Our global Ramadan message comes from Yusuf Abramji, a social activist in Johannesburg. And our location today is the Simonstown Masjid, and we speak to the resident Imam, Imam Abdul Hakim Rabban. And we end off with a musical interlude. Salaam and welcome to episode 4 of Living Ramadan on Dean TV. My name is Mehbub Bawa, your host for the 10-part season. I trust you've enjoyed the programs that we presented to you thus far and I look forward to having you with us today. Today, coming to you from a very windy uh, Simonstown and behind me is the Nurul Islam Masjid. Uh, Imam Hakim Rabban is the resident Imam here. We're going to be chatting to him a bit later on in the show and we'll find out about the activities here. Sad to note that there's only one Muslim family currently resident in Simonstown after being a hive of activity of Islam uh, in years gone by. The masjid is more than 200 years old and it was built on the site of a home originally and then the two homes alongside uh, were incorporated into the masjid uh, and into the current structure that we see now. We'll find out more about the masjid as we continue with our show today. But first up uh, this, uh, we will be uh, speaking to Nuha Esop who is a therapeutic life coach. I am what I would term as a therapeutic life coach, uh, which basically means that I not only help people get to their future goals, but I also help them discover, uncover, and reroute what has been stopping them in the past. So I happen to deal with people's limit limiting beliefs, their past issues, traumas, experiences, and help them move forward from that point. I use mostly conversational coaching. Um, but of course I have a number of uh, healing modalities that I've studied which is neuro-linguistic programming, NLP as well as uh, being a Demartini method facilitator so I have that in the back of my mind whenever I'm having the conversation so it's about allowing the client to actually speak and, and but it's first and foremost to have the client trust you enough to speak and so it's you know, your first session is about building that relationship to have a trust um, relationship with the client in order for them to open up and tell you about what it is that is bothering them. My business is 12 years old, uh, but I've been doing this type of coaching for I think about seven or eight years now. You know what I think I get, I always say to people that I get to see God in motion every day. You know, I it's a it's not just one specific thing I c cannot isolate one class out of one client it is God in motion every day and what I mean by that is is that I'm a firm believer of of the science that says everything happens for a reason it's not just words there literally is a reason for everything and once you uncover that you get to see the order you get to see why you know God had created something or why it had to happen that way and therefore our challenges are the things that actually is our progression it's the thing that moves us forward it's part of our evolution so I guess all of them are, are highlights I, I can't quite hone in on one. Oh Ramadan means to me a spiritual cleansing um, it's it's that moment where I don't become someone that I'm not I become more of who I am and and in that moment it's it's about deepening the connection um, with Allah and in my because of being a mother <laughs> being a wife of course I have uh, kitchen duties I have kitchen uh, responsibilities but I'm well prepared for that uh, it's everything's ready in the freezer um, being a working mother one has to be able to do that and I so happen to do my own samosa folding because it's therapeutic for some strange reason um, and yeah so that's that's what I do I try to go to mosque with the kids as of often as I can 
um, and if the kids, my daughter doesn't come out at one o'clock, then I'm in Juma. So I, I try to do more of what I normally would do. You know, there's a saying that goes something to the tune of, you know, to know yourself is, or to love yourself is to love thy Lord, or to know yourself is to know thy Lord. And for me, that is something that's very important for myself and others to know themselves well enough to know what is their limitations and what is their full expression, what is their, their truth. And so, you know, every day I get to deal with that with clients where I help people uncover who they are, the real them, not the one that people told them to be. And, and for me, that is a spiritual essence that every, every human being has that I have the privilege of dealing with every day. And, and so my, my Ramadan practice of deepening who I am, deepening my understanding, is how I help in my work as well, my clients. This is Living Ramadan, episode four, beautiful scenic surroundings that we find ourselves in today. That's the harbor in Simonstown. And we are at the Nurul Islam Masjid, which is here in Simonstown. Some great advice and inspirational words shared by our therapeutic life coach, Nuha Esop. Throughout the series, she'll be sharing some more uh, pearls of wisdom as we continue with Living Ramadan season two. This masjid, the Nurul Islam Masjid, has uh, certainly uh, years of history. It was established more than 200 years ago. Uh, uh, but the current structure came to being around about 1920 when uh, the two adjoining houses where the original house was brought over and a uh, uh, masjid was established but then the two additional houses alongside was also bought and uh, then ad included into the uh, masjid structure. We're going to find out more about the uh, masjid as well throughout the show and be speaking to the resident imam here. The area that we're standing on and uh, me being afraid of heights, I'm here with a bit of trepidation but we're standing on the first belt above the uh, ground floor area and uh, during the month of Ramadan as well as for Jumu'ah uh, the uh, uh, Mu'addin stands in this area and he does the call for prayer which is the Adhan and then also on other occasions he goes one balcony higher which I will not attempt to do <laughs> but he goes up there to uh, do the call for prayer as well the Adhan is rendered from the higher balcony as well right now we are going to be finding out about a uh, non-Muslim's perspective on Ramadan Hello, I'm Royston Stoffels. My recollections of Ramadan, or as a kid I always knew it, as the Puaza. So well, as a child, what I remembered most was in the evenings at sunset, the children carrying little parcels of food across to the neighbors. I was always a little bit envious because I didn't get rid of it. But it was part of the Muslim tradition, which of course I grew to accept very much because I always became a recipient of that wonderful time. Um, school time, for example, uh, when we were at school and it was time for or the Puaza, our, um, our friends, of course, our Muslim friends wouldn't bring that lovely sandwich of curry from the previous night to us, which we'd share for lunchtime. But of course, Ramadan was the time when, besides half the school being there, and we did no work at school, We'd also get lovely parcels of, um, of biscuits uh, with colourful fruits on top of it and samosas and dalchis and, uh, and if we're lucky, even a bit of biryani. Yeah, those were, those were wonderful times. And of course, the day of La Barang, the kids walking around from house to house saying Salamat and you having to fork out a few pennies because they look so wonderful in their new clothes. But of course, those are the days when kids could just wander off in the neighborhood. Hmm. But always a good time for all of us, no matter what your religion. It is a time of reflection, of sacrifice, and of giving praise to the Almighty. This is Living Ramadan, episode four, and we're coming to you from the Nurul Islam Masjid in Simonstown. Uh, earlier, we'd uh, listened to Royston Stoffels, and we saw him speaking about his perspective on Ramadan. It was nice to hear him refer to Ramadan as the Puasa. It certainly is the Puasa that we are in in the final 10 days of Ramadan, as we bring you episode four from the Nurul, Is Nurul Islam Masjid here in Simonstown. So the area that I'm sitting in currently is where the ladies perform Salah, and this is part of the original block that uh, was set 
set up as the masjid in the uh, uh, in from 1920 onwards, and that's also when they then acquired the adjoining buildings. And we'll speak about that, and we'll see the extent of the masjid as it is now a little bit later. But we're now going to be uh, bringing you an insert that we shot with two really empowered women who are doing so much uh, for their community in Kensington but also uh, across the board for pr families who are underprivileged uh, and especially women and children from the disadvantaged communities. They are Yasmina Ratcliffe and her daughter Wida Habir from the Independent Women Empowerment Bond. But first, an inspirational message from Babu Fablonka. One of the biggest lessons I've learned is always to produce more than what you consume. It doesn't matter whether it be financially, in terms of health, or in terms of emotion. If you produce more positive emotions than what you take in, you're bound to be a winner. If you produce more than what you financially use, you're bound to be a winner. So it's a winning formula. So just remember, produce more than what you consume in every department of your life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Asmina Red Club. I just want to explain something. My late husband passed away 18 years ago. But six weeks after he died, my late, my daughter's husband also passed away. Alhamdulillah. And in that time, um, we were desperate. But, but uh, Yusuf came over the door while I was alone. And with three ladies, from the uh, Kensington Mosque and he said that he's from the wealthy Alhamdulillah and he brought me three carriers of groceries we didn't add anything it went like can I miss no say Brookskier and Alhamdulillah I was so grateful I cannot I cannot thank Allah enough for at, la, at least I thought that day Allah loves us and from there onwards we now the two of us we started this organization because if we can go through this, how many other people out there? But Alhamdulillah, she that my husband, like my late husband Abdul Hamid, he was involved in three mosques. Factorton, he started that mosque there with the committee and Kensington, and he was involved at, at uh, Sheikh Ismail Kiran's mosque Al Al Azhar in District 6. Alhamdulillah, so what he left off, we took on. And from there onwards, Alhamdulillah, we started until today. We are 17 years in existence. We had every we went through difficult times to bring all this up. But Alhamdulillah, I cannot thank Allah enough. And I'm proud it's not only us as Muslims, we do it to the non-Muslim people too. I'm buying every Tuesday up to 500, 600 rand of bread. And the bread goes to anybody who comes over my door, but it's not just giving. I want to know your circumstances. I want to see your ID. I want to see if you got pension or pay or disability. My name is Wida Khabir. Um, what we have done over the years was we um, brought children in um, from perhaps the Frackton area. We to send them to college. Um, I had to sometimes pay for the children's transport. Um, we did other things also as time went on and years went by. But um, there's more children in need out there. And because I remarried, I'm now five years married, Alhamdulillah, I moved out of the area. And for me, is if I can see to one child, I can see to more. And we decided if we can do Frackton, we can do other places also. And then what we did was um, other people when we went on to the Facebook and people came near to say they in need they the the areas are in need and then we just decided if we can do Kensington and Frackton we can do other areas and then we got involved with the orphanages because they asked us um, certain orphanages came forward and asked and Alhamdulillah it was just growing and growing and growing um, we did for the past years we did um, the Muharram, uh, just a small lunch for Frackiton alone and um, the sponsors alhamdulillah some are passed yeah, on yeah. may Allah reward them abundantly give them light in the akhirah uh, give them the highest place in Jannah inshallah um, 
some of them passed on some of them are still alive and um they help us tremendously where we can actually now alhamdulillah for the past three years that we catering for 450 children for the Muharram lunch. Mm -hmm. Last year was the first year where we actually started the iftar, Ramadan iftar, with 200 children. We give them the Eid clothes, um, the toiletries for Eid, because if we want to give something to our children, we can give it to an orphan or a destitute ch a child also. This, so this is new stuff, it's not old stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the goodie bags for the Muharram lunch, um, that is actually worth 200 rand and more so um, if we can do that we can actually do more and it's like amazing we did last year the first year that we did um, the christmas lunch for 24 children that we had this year we're taking it further because we have four orphan christian orphanages that came aboard that is our beneficiaries um, so we're giving them a Christmas lunch. So Alhamdulillah, with the people that we, that's standing behind us, just remember it's not me and my mom alone. We've got assistance, people that assist at the back. And they are the people that because we are moving forward, they are moving with us, Alhamdulillah. It's episode four of Living Ramadan on Dean TV. Uh, earlier we were listening to an inspirational message from Babu Foblonka and thereafter what a wonderful work being done in the community of Kensington and across the Western Cape by two amazing women that is mother and daughter team Yasmina and Wida. We are at the Nurul Islam Masjid here in Simonstown. Now, earlier on you saw the ablution area, the Wudu Hana, which is part of the newer area that was uh, uh, added to the existing structure which I'm standing in and it all started with this particular one many many years ago and then in the 1920s the uh, area that you saw and the area in the far uh, behind me that was also another house that was then incorporated into the existing masjid structure uh, a very sad occurrence took place here a couple of months ago when the mosque was desecrated and i believe the kalk bay mosque also at the more or less the same time but what was wonderful was that the spirit of the community all the non-muslims and organizations in the area rallied to the support of the masjid and in fact i was reading a note earlier on that it was in 1926 when uh, renovations and restructuring of the mosque took place that lots of non-muslim organizations even contributed uh, funding towards the restructuring of the mosque we'll find out more about that and uh, other activities that the mosque undertakes from the imam of the mosque in a short while but right now we get a global perspective of ramadan i'm yusuf abramji a social uh, cohesion activist uh, i'm in laudium pretoria and uh, we're marking the holy month of ramadan ramadan is fast drawing to a close and every time when Ramadan comes to a close, many of us are filled with sadness. Muslims throughout the world over the past month have been united. United in prayer, united in giving charity, united in making a difference. Uh, and the community spirit that we feel during the holy month of Ramadan is just awesome. Uh, as we come to the end of the holy month of Ramadan and we prepare to celebrate the Eid, uh, I wish this, uh, use this opportunity to wish all Muslims throughout South Africa and throughout the world a very blessed Eid and I hope that the month was very spiritually uplifting. Uh, please continue to remember us in your prayers and we continue to pray for the Ummah to be united. We continue to pray for peace throughout the world and the world is going through trying times and we hope that peace will return throughout the world. Ramadan Mubarak, Eid Mubarak. It's Living Ramadan episode 4 and our location today as we come to the end of our show is the uh, Nurul Islam Masjid in Simonstown. With me is the Imam of the Masjid, Imam Rabban. Imam, Assalamu Alaikum. Alaykum Salam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Shukran for having us here today. A beautiful Masjid in a wonderful part of the Cape. But sadly it's um, not as busy as it used to be before. Mm. Before we get into the intricacies of the Masjid, first tell us how long have you been associated with the Masjid? Yeah, officially I'm here 24 years. 24 years? Yes, but I've been assisting the previous Imam for about 10 years. Okay. And so Imam was resident in Simonstown? I was born here and resident here, raised here up to the age of 15 when we were forced to move out. Gee. And you also associated with the Ocean View Masjid as well? Correct. In fact, when people were moved, forcibly removed from Simonstown, they were moved to Ocean View. The same community then built a Masjid there. And uh, historically, they kept uh, one imam with two masjids. 
because it was one community. Sure. So at the moment, I'm also appreciating in Ocean View, where the bigger community is, where most of the people from here left. And hardly people around here at the moment. Sure. So, uh, in Ramadan, do you still get uh, musallis coming through for Tarawih? Yes, Alhamdulillah, we have the whole month of Ramadan. And last year, we started having Eid here also. And Juma's Alhamdulillah, every week is full. From uh, people that work in the area, the naval dockyard is still here. And uh, we have a full capacity of, of musallis for Juma. Alhamdulillah, that's very good. And now there was an interesting historical fact about the masjid uh, linked to an uh, Afrikaans Quran. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, in fact, the two Imams before me, before me was Imam Sal Emmanuel, and then before him was Imam Amin Baker. He translated the Quran into Afrikaans. And he was also the school principal of the Muslim school which existed at that time. And he was obviously my school teacher as well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I believe uh, that uh, from a historical perspective, there's a museum in Simon's Town. Yes, there's a museum which uh, tells us how rich this town is. And uh, in Hamla, the, the museum has a very interesting, you know, uh, where they actually tell you the whole history from slavery, how the magic came into existence and the people far out of town, but Alhamdulillah, you know, amazingly, uh, Mawlana Hassan Hendrix would say that to Nguru, his Mu'addin, instructed him in all masjid, make the Adhan, but the people in Simon's son must hear it. <laughs> and Alhamdulillah, he says, they heard. And that's why you find the Muslims in, 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 in the masjid here, in Simon's town. So the masjid as it stands now, I mean, earlier on we were up on one of the balconies, and you were mm. telling me earlier on that the Mu'addin still goes up to render the Adhan. Yes, on Juma days, yeah, the Mu'addin goes up there, and he renders the Adhan. In fact, those years, there were no mic, you know, there were no uh, amplifier systems. And if you know the distance to the past the Simonstone station, the person who make the Adhan here, people could hear right up to the... <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Imam, there are obviously no real activities that take place from an outreach program, etc. during Ramadan because yes, there are no families yeah, here. Because there's nobody staying around the masjid anymore. And, uh, but there is Salah five times a day. Fazir, Dur, Asa, Maghrib, Isha, we have people. And the masjid caters for quite a you know, um, amount of visitors that passes here to, to Cape Point. We have lots of foreign people coming. They read either you know, Dur or Asa or any other Salat will come here. But we have Alhamdulillah Salat all the time. As we are producing this program in the last 10 days of Ramadan, this is episode 4, uh, we are obviously fast approaching the end of the month mm. and Eid is on our doorstep. Okay. Just a short message from your side for the community. Yes. Look, uh, Alhamdulillah, our wish is that this message should become vibrant as it was. And obviously, we want people to come back and buy. The price is obviously very high. I'm sure people can ask from Allah now in the month of Ramadan. You know, when Allah answers all the du'as, please ask me, Allah to give, you know, that the masjid gets filled once more again. And as the masjids are filled, we, we're so happy. I'm very, I make my tarawih every night and happy to see at least the masjid is, is, is activated and, and it's busy. So we wish that, inshallah, people from whoever sees the program come around in the radio salat here, come even for one or two nights for tarawih also. With that, we've come to the end of episode four of Living Ramadan, and our location today was the Nur Islam Masjid, a masjid with great historical value in the community of Simonstown, a beautiful part of the Western Cape. Remember to cherish each and every moment in the company of the special people in your life. Let them know as often as you can that they are important to you, that you appreciate them, and that you love them dearly. I wish you peace and blessings. Salam. i